Hi there, I'm Charlie, your online business manager and WordPress expert. My goal is to assist small to medium business owners build their businesses with a focus on using the internet and online technologies in an appropriate and cost-effective manner. People hire me to take the stress out of managing their businesses and allow themselves to focus on what they do best. Frank is an esteemed, oh my goodness, I can't believe I stumbled on that already. <laughs> Frank is an esteemed internet entrepreneur specializing in business to business and SAAS or SaaS or software as a service marketing. Frank has over 20 years hands on experience in the industry and a deep understanding of the challenges that B2B founders and marketers face in growing their businesses. Hey, Frank, how are you doing? Hey, Charlie. Yeah, I'm doing good. How about yourself? I'm, I'm fantastic. Um, and so people know we are on opposite sides of the world again today. Um, it's late here for me and I think it's a pretty reasonable time for Frank, which is fantastic. Is. Um, so Frank, before we go any further, I'd really love for you to give people an idea of who you are and what it is you do, because that intro was very light on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Charlie, for having me. A really pleasure to to meet you. And uh, yeah, as for an introduction, my name is Frank Hussman, and I'm the co-founder of MaxReality.com, and it's an accountant agency, and we specialize in helping B2B companies become the expert in their market. And by doing that, they will draw the clients to themselves. And um, yeah, that's that's in a nutshell what what I'm doing right now. And as for my background, I think you covered it a little bit. I've um, had a couple of B2B companies myself, and the latest was a SaaS company, software as a service company. Um, and um, yeah, we, we we made B2B marketing software, marketing automation software. And that was a very interesting ride. And I learned so many things about creating software, marketing software, selling software. And um, one of the main things I got out of that is that showing your expertise as a founder as as a creator basically is so important to to make sure that new people will see you and will know about the things that you're selling to them and i think it's something that is underestimated right now and especially with this whole ai wave going on it's it's something really interesting so that's why i'm focusing right now on that and just the knowledge that i got in my head right now from all these rides just to 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 tell and show them to other people well, this, that sounds absolutely amazing, and um, you, you, uh, you mentioned AI, which has immediately um, piqued my interest. So we will come back to it, I promise. Um, just before we go a little bit further, you were speaking about B two B. A bit of explanation for people that's business to business, in case some of my listeners are a little newer and they don't understand what that means. Um, and basically. Um, not every business and not all of my listeners will be B2B businesses, but there is information that you can take from everything we talk about here and apply it to your own businesses anyway. And we all end up doing a little bit of B2B anyway, <laughs> particularly in the service industry. Yeah, that's definitely true. So um, let, let's sort of head on into it and talk about, you, 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 obviously your passion is marketing and you said something there about you've got to be got to be seen. What it, Do you want to start there and we'll see where we head to? Yeah, yeah, sure. So well, any business needs to market themselves, right? So, I mean, you can wait until clients come in, but I mean, at some point you really need to do some marketing and probably have a sales system as well. So I think of it as systems. Um I like to have a system in place. And when you do uh, in, in B2B, there's some channels that work better than other channels. Um, the obvious channel to go to is maybe Google, use Google Ads or Facebook, Facebook Ads. But in B2B marketing, everything is ha happening most of the time in LinkedIn, on LinkedIn. So you need to be there. And one of the things that you can do there is showcase yourself to, to, that you, you know about the problems that your clients go through. And that's one of the main things that, that, yeah, that I've been doing in the past. And it can be done in so many different ways. Um, yeah, so that's that's think that's I think the, the the short answer to your question. So um, just to dig on that one because you said you know with all this AI stuff going around, you still need to be found. You still need to be um, out there and and marketing yourself. What AI doesn't do that for you? No, it definitely doesn't do that for you. So one of the things that we 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 used to do in the past as marketeers is that we created blog articles, for example. I think that's still a great thing to do. Um, so you would create a blog article about the 10 ways that your company solves problem XYZ for whatever avatar you're, you're servicing, right? 
and and you create lots of these these articles that are all related to each other and at, at some point you would have about 30 articles all surrounded surrounding that topic and google will give you some love by sending you traffic to your website so that's one of the ways that you could attract new customers this still works of course but the thing is that now with ai tools like chat gpt the large language models they 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 just they turn out this content really easily and uh, of course you need to edit it a little bit but there's at least this content avalanche going on right now so it's 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 really easy to create content if it ranks in google is something else of course if it will send you traffic but it definitely is possible when you edit it. So there's this whole war on content going on. And, and my philosophy, and it's not even my philosophy, I mean, I've seen it work in the past so many times that if you show, um, if you tell your about your real expertise, the things that you have um, lived through, that you have seen, that your clients have, have gone through, and you 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 show this in, in, in all the articles that you're writing or all the videos that you're making, all the social posts that you're making, um, this cannot be copied because it's it's all from the inside, right? You, you really live through it. And, and and that is never going to be a replicate by any AI. So that way you become the source of AI. So I'm actually going to sort of put a little bit of a slant on that because uh, we, we have a lot of conversations uh, amongst my, a small group of my friends about, oh, well, you know, my content's being stolen or that my idea's been taken and someone's taken this and rewritten it and that's really my content. And it's like, okay, that's going to happen. And that has yeah, that's happened for years. It's going to keep on happening. It is just one of the things that does. AI is kind of just the next evolution on that and our, our job as business owners and people who are promoting our businesses and if you're working as a marketer for a business um, is to take that to the next level and as Frank says be 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 irreplaceable be the person that they go to to get their, to get their content from pretty much yeah yeah, and actually be human because that's the part that's missing. Because when you read all the blog articles about the ten, the top ten, whatever it is, right? For 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 top ten ways to implement the CRM system system in your company or in X Y Z company or type of company, right? If you Google that, you will notice that all these articles are more or less the same. There will never be someone who says, "Okay, I really did it," and this is the problem that I found with Salesforce, Pipedrive, whatever CRM, HubSpot, or whatever CRM that they are reviewing. Uh, so, well, the, the ones that do, they are of course the best, and 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 that's what I'm actually missing right now in B2B content. To be honest, that that whole personal touch, and of course there are some companies that do this, but the majority are like, "Oh, okay, we got a new toy, let's go." <laughs> And the new toy is, of course, generating more AI content that is boring. So your content doesn't have to be boring. <laughs> Definitely not. Okay. So um, so you've also got a free ebook um, on your website about not making your content boring. Uh, sure. I, I encourage people to head on over to uh, maxial, maxiality.com. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, yeah. And and grab it. it, it I'm going to just say it looks amazing. The, the visuals on it are really, really good. And that's, that grabbed me straight up front. Um, I asked Frank not to give me any um, exams on that one because I haven't read it yet. I got it down the other day and it's sitting there to, to go through uh, in depth. Um, but you mentioned that content is boring. Uh, you need to switch it up. Uh, you want to market to businesses. Uh, you got to stand out and LinkedIn. Where, where would a business start? If I, had, if I was coming in uh, as a new business owner, what would the, be the things that you'd recommend for a business owner to do? Right, right, right. Well, just, just one, one small step, one zoom out, is that um, what I mentioned by uh, content being boring is, there, especially in B2B, like B2C, if you write about fashion, right, or jewelry, I mean, there, there's so many great pictures you can add. There's so many stories you can tell probably about how these boots are created or how these shoes are created. So that's why B2C content is generally not so boring. That, that's that's one of the things that I'd like to point out. So when you're looking at B2B content, sometimes it's, it's yeah, like, like I mentioned before, it's really boring. Why? Because it all looks the same and there's not a real, there's no personality in it. So that, that's, that part is what I'm missing. So back to your question, how would you start? Well, basically the, the first thing that I always do is, is you have to have some sort of foundation. If you have n no content, just a website with a couple of pages, right? Then the first thing you need to do is what are the main problems that your your customers think about? What are the things that they, they you know, what drives them crazy when they want to go to sleep? What are the problems that you can solve, by the way? I mean, 
it would be great if you can solve them with your services or with your your business or whatever it is you're selling, right? Uh, but there are, are also related problems to the things that you do that you can help them solve. So if you have this list of so about 20 problems, you can create content around that. And creating content content nowadays is not just one article. Well, it's the, the article is a start, right? But um, and it needs to have also what what we're doing is adding video content to make it really personal. And one of the things that that's that easily done is the way that we're talking right now. Uh, we interview people in a more or less journalistic way, and we really dig deeper about the things that they have yeah, gone through, basically. And that will create a really strong article and a video and a lot of uh, social posts as well that you can use in any social media platform. And if you do that for a couple of months consistently, people will, will see you and perceive you as an expert because they will recognize what you're saying, right? And if you do that for, for a couple of months, at some po point when the niche is really small, you'll be seen as, a, as an authority in that niche and people will just come to you. Okay, so I'm just going to sort of dig dig down a bit because um, a lot of what you said is what I tell um, my clients as well when when we're setting up things. Uh, it's about find out what the problems are. Don't don't tell people how great your products are. Tell people how well they solve the problem um, that they're having. And if you don't know what the problem your your products fixes is, go find out. <laughs> go, go, you, you, you've got to know that people don't buy things um, because well okay sometimes they buy things because they want it but generally they don't spend money on something unless they have a problem they want to fix and that's the thing that people really need to to bear in mind um, you mentioned doing journalistic uh, style videos I, i'm sure i'm going to have a lot of my listeners and viewers going no we don't want to do that perhaps you could dig a little bit deeper into that one for us and uh, talk about that yeah sure so the thing that um, you mentioned about buying something and impulse that have definitely happens in b2b b2c right business to consumer companies shops and stuff like that but with the companies that I'm dealing with, business to business companies, I mean, they sell um, big things for at least 50,000 euros to millions of euros. And many people are involved in the buying process and it takes six to nine months before you get from a lead to a sale. So uh, everyone has questions and you need to answer these questions. That That's basically the start of it. Uh, so you need to know... Um, what, who is your ideal client profile? What are the who are these people? Who are the people who are going to buy? Who are the blockers? Because sometimes there are people that don't want you to buy. So it's a list of people, and then all these people have problems, and you come to uh, you get a list of all these problems that you can create content about. Um, and so you're not talking about the features of your product or service, like you already mentioned. You're not talking about how great your company is. Well, you, you well if you can show and tell the things that you created, right? The, the solutions you create. That's always great to have cases and testimonials and stuff like that. So back to the problems. The thing is that um, when you ask any general writer to to create an article about any of these problems that you just summed up, it kind of gets really boring. And nowadays, the whole I mean. I, we create about 20, 30 articles each month for our clients and in different languages, by the way. So since the start of January around the born of ChatGPT or the going public of ChatGPT, we noticed that many of our writers had been using uh, AI to create the content. So now we have um, AI um, detectors. So we have software that can check if it's AI or not. So it's, I mean, it's like a whole rabbit hole that we're going into right now. But the thing is that when you read that content, it is okay, but it just, it just doesn't really feel great. I, I can't really put it into words. You, you, you probably know it. There's no soul to it. That's true. So when I want to dig deeper, I'm, uh, I'm always interviewing people just one hour in the month. And I'm interviewing people um, uh, um, with the people that I work with, of course, with my co-founder as well. And we have a more or less of a journalistic approach. What I'm trying to say is that the, the interviews that we're doing, we try to dig a little bit deeper. Don't just get on the surface. And sometimes, yeah, you can really get touched by the things that they say and by the things they went through. And if you can capture that, put it in a video and put it in an article, then you have great content that people would love to read. And there's one thing that you might might go through your mind is that, but I don't want to be on a video. I don't want uh, people to see my face. I mean, that's great. We don't need to do that. I mean, we can use audiograms, which are just audiographs or just a picture of yourself. And we can just skip the whole video anyway and have like a, a thumbnail or, or, or an image. 
that happens as well. But the whole idea behind is that um, answer these questions in a way that shows that you've experienced it and you really know what you're talking about. And then it, the article will have soul and you create, can create um, many social posts around it as well. And video just works. That's why I mention it because it, it's really it's, blowing it's up. It's easy and it's very easy. And um, I, I, I think I, I just want to touch on a couple of things there as well. One is that um, you 70% of your communication is nonverbal. It's visual and it's body language and it's tone of voice and all of those things. So it's the nonverbal stuff. So video works really, really well because you get to see someone and you get to see them talking and you get a feeling whether you believe it or not, you know, you might question it, that person's telling a lie or that person's telling the truth or, gee, I really respond. I really understand this person and how they're feeling. And that's because you're getting that that visual and that's why that's so important. Uh, so I just want to sort of touch back on that one because that, that was pretty important. Um, yeah, Charlie, sorry and... to interrupt you. But I think that's a great point because at the end, you can create as much content as you would like, right? Even in, in the way that I'm telling right now and describing. Um, but at the end of the day, people come to your website, they don't know you and they need to trust you. So how can you make them trust you? That's that's one of the main questions. And the thing you just mentioned is that video is really great to uh, make people trust you. So uh yeah that, that's really a, a great way to to show that but there are of course so many other things especially selling software is you can you can grab it right it's non-tangible so how can you sell software how can you trust someone this these are really and especially in in in, in these kind of techy markets it's really interesting how you can help people trust you and yeah video helps but there are definitely other things that can help as well um and the, i think the other part of that is that people don't People don't buy from companies. Companies don't buy from companies. People within companies buy from people within companies. And you've, yeah. and, and what you're talking about there about getting your content and giving it, I, I used the word soul before, but heart, giving it um, meat, just giving it something more than just words on a page. It's going to talk to someone. And it, it will talk to someone at a very different level. So I, I think that's really interesting. So I find it really interesting that you're talking about the content coming out is boring because um, I, I don't know about you, but I think I've been seeing that for a couple of years. You know, you go to a website, yep, same same article, same article, same article. Um, and you're just looking for that one thing different, that one thing that tells you why I should be doing this thing. So that's really, really important for people to take on board. Yeah, totally. Okay, agree. so um, you were talking about LinkedIn as well. I'm kind of fascinated that that's where um, all of your business to business stuff is being done at the moment. I mean, I, I shouldn't be because it is LinkedIn and it's been around for years, but it, it it's daunting. I'm on LinkedIn. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing there. I've been on there for years, and I don't know what I'm doing there. So, can can you perhaps talk a little bit about that for us? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. So when you create content, of course, you create content for your own website. That's your own platform. It's your, it's, it's yours. No one can take it away, right? As long as you pay the hosting bill and the domain, you're, you're, you're just set. You're, you're okay. So that will hopefully draw uh, people from Google to your website. Um, or you can help in, in sales outreach or the email marketing if you use it for the articles that you create. But then, of course, there's LinkedIn. And nine out of 10 times, your uh, ideal customer profile will be on LinkedIn. And the, the question is, of course, so how do you approach them? How do you get clients from LinkedIn? And one of the things that I like to do is, um, there are the two, two things that I like to do. You can create content, but you can also um, comment on other people's content. And if you don't have the, if you don't like or can't create any content, um, which by the way, like I said before, I just interview someone for one hour and you will have a month of content just based on this interview. So. You're, you're all set, but if you don't want, if you want to do it yourself and you don't have any time, whatever, um, my personal advice, try to see if you can post two times a week about the problems that your ideal customer is facing. And the other thing that you probably can do, and you can skip the first part, you can skip the not creating content. If you just comment in a, in a great way that gives insights, things that you've seen, you've noticed on um, other people's posts that are also targeting your um, ideal client profile. So, and if you do that for 30 minutes every day and just consistently for a couple of weeks, you will notice that because the business happens in the DMs, in the direct messages. 
Uh, so you you don't do any public uh, offers, whatever. People will reach out to you in in your direct mail and will, will contact you and will say, "Hey, Charlie, that's a great insight. And uh, can you tell me a little bit more about X Y Z?" Or it can also be the other way around, right? Because um, at some point you will have to pick up the phone in in sales and on LinkedIn and send a direct message to someone. And and it's all it's it's um yeah it's it's educational. It's not jamming your foot into the door. And, and yes, it takes time, of course. But um, if you, you build trust by gr- creating great comments um, and at some point reaching out with uh, something educational that helps them as well. Um, so that's the way there is a whole system to it. And if we, we could talk for about this for hours, by the way, well, not hours, but I mean, I could give you the nitty gritty in an hour or so. But it's it's I understand it's daunting, but in the end, it comes down to you either create uh, two two posts a week or so, uh, and comment. Or if you don't want to uh, c- create the content, you just make sure you reach out to other people's content and in the end DM people by sending them interesting stuff. And yeah, that's that that's interesting. Go on, sorry, you hadn't finished there. Yeah, so to to finish that because I mean it's still it's still consultative selling that we're doing. You need to go to some sort of call to action. So you need to get them on the phone or on a call like this, right? So if you send over a a direct message by saying, okay, maybe this is helpful, or maybe I can help you with this and that, is it interesting for you? Then you can send them to your Calendly link or you send them the phone number or schedule a Zoom meeting, right? So it's that that's the the, more or less the the funnel that you would use uh, on 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 LinkedIn. Okay, so I'm I'm just gonna recap a couple of things there there, because there's lots of great content there. One of the things that I picked up is that um, you are creating credentials for yourself. You are positioning yourself as the expert or and expert in in your in your field with all of your information. And you can absolutely do that via commenting, um, answering questions, providing advice. You are not selling at that point, and that's got to be something that is really uh, top of mind. It's not jumping onto someone's um, post and saying I have the answer and here's the product that will do it for you or here's the service that will do it for you Uh, it might be hey listen I had a similar problem and I found this service to be really good or I found this piece of software to be really good and here's why I found it to be really good let me know if you need any more help that's always a great way of doing it because you're being very helpful you're giving out really good information for free and then if someone wants to come chat to you they will Uh, And then the final part of what Frank was saying there, which I found I I don't do and I don't do well, I I will admit, is following up with the DM and saying, here's a calendar link, would you like to have a look, would you like to have a conversation? Um, It's not a hard sell at all. It's a nice soft sell, actually. I really like it um, because it's a, I'm reaching out, I'm making myself available to you. And if you don't want to take that up, that's okay. There's no, no skin loss. We're not... We're not gonna. I'm not gonna be enemies forever over this. Um, I think that's a really great way of doing it. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Thank yeah, you. my pleasure. Yeah, yeah. And I, I to be honest, it's like be consistent and, and, and do this for for a while. See how it works and see what you can learn from it. it I mean, but at the end of the day, it's it's just like cold calling in sales. Just pick up the create a list, pick up the phone, and you know that out of the ten phone calls you do, when you get. To the 10, there will be one out of 10 will pick, will you will have a conversation with someone, right? So it's it's at the end of the day and you learn from all the conversations that you do. And um, yeah, just just go for it, basically. It's, um yeah, it's 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 something that a lot of people, I, I think, are, are are missing in in their in their sales outreach, to be honest. Um, but that's like we started off by talking about processes and systems. I think you need to have a marketing system. I think you need to have a sales system. And for business to business companies, the marketing system is, Create content about the things that people, the, the the question that they have, the problems that you can solve, and 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 use your own personal voice and create that content on your website and use it in social. And the sales system will be uh, for business business companies. Make sure that you're on LinkedIn, that you're either creating content or commenting and get into the DMs with helpful educational stuff. And if you do that for a couple of months, you will definitely get noticed, and people will, will even call you. It, it might even be media. Um, my experience has been that I get calls from from uh, even the the the, the news uh, because I posted something somewhere. And I will be on the eight o'clock news in in the evening. Um, so it's just just be there. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. 
That is truly amazing. Okay. Um, now, do you mind if I just sort of circle on back a little bit to AI? Um, we, we've already covered the bit about, you know, yeah, AI is going to be there. AI is going to be writing our content. AI will be taking your content and rewriting it. It's just, it's the way it is. It's it It, it has been that way for many years. If not AI, just other people. Um And I, 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 actually, just a quick anecdote on that. You were, you were talking about how it's boring and how sometimes it doesn't make sense because of the way it's written. And, and I was, I, I went straight to the um, content spinners that we used to use to uh, do SEO content, and how you'd look at it and go, oh, that's just word salad. Um, and how now when I go to a website and I'm looking at a page, I go, oh, this article was written for SEO purposes. <laughs> like you can tell there's a real distinct feel to it. Um, that, but you did mention that AI can actually be quite helpful to business. And I'm not sure if you actually meant it to come out that way, but that's certainly one of the ways I picked it up in that <laughs> it can take a lot of your articles. It can take a lot of your um, information and your documents and it can give you uh, an interactive chat that answers questions based on the information, like your own information. Um, is that what you were actually trying to say to me earlier when we were chatting off, off, off camera? Yes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. There, well, there's so many ways that AI can help you. I think you summed it up perfectly. AI is here to stay. Make sure that you can use it in a, in a helpful way. And, and if you do that, then there are so many opportunities that, that will be unlocked for you. And one of the ways that you can use your own data and put that in some AI language model and th th by the way, it's it's really cheap. They're they're all they're already there. It will train based on your data, and that can be used as uh, a knowledge base for support for sales, maybe even and um, that way, or even a training material for the people that you have working for you, right? So it's 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 really interesting that that all these things are opening up right now, which used to cost a lot of money and it had to be just developed by uh, some I don't know <laughs> serious company that cost you a lot of money. So this is one thing that. I see AI agencies pop up right now that do this for you, basically. And it's not really that difficult, to be honest, because they're all they're all sort of free and or for a couple of, of dollars per month tools that can help you with that. But that's one part. Another part is that the thing that I just mentioned about the, um, the videos that we create, the articles that we create, um, we still need a summary. We still need a transcription, for example. And AI tools have been doing that. I think for a couple of years already. Um, so that's what I'm using as well. We need maybe a description for Google as well. We need a social post for LinkedIn, for example. And, and sometimes we use AI to give us brainstorm some ideas or create a hook, an intro. Um, so yeah, it, it helps a lot, but still it that needs humans to make sure it, it has that, yeah, like you mentioned before, that soul, which is, I think is, is a great way of something that is hard to describe, but we all know what it means to have some sort of heart. Well, that's, that is absolutely fantastic. Um, and I'm actually so glad I had this conversation because I've been on the fence with AI. I, I, I've got to say I'm not a fan. Um and I'm I'm not a fan for a number of reasons. It doesn't mean to say I won't use it. It's just I have my reservations. <laughs> there we go. Um, but if it's a tool and it's the tool that I can use that way that still gives me control over my content and my information and my IP, then, yeah, okay, I'm all for that. Makes my life easier. I'm, I'm going to be there. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so how can people work with you, uh, Frank? Because clearly you do work with businesses. What sort of businesses do you work for? What would you describe your ideal client as? And <laughs> how can people get in touch with you? Yeah, you can reach me at maxiality.com. And um, I'm, and we're working with B2B companies, business to business companies in, in general. This is really broad, but most of the time we're working with tech companies. Um, uh, th that's about 60, 70% of the, the clients that we service, uh, service right now. And uh, just to reach out, you can just uh, schedule uh, in my calendar a meeting and like to chat. That's uh, that's the way you would like to work. Yeah. Fabulous. And I'm going to remind people to um, head across to maxiality.com and pick up the uh, ebook that's there. It, it looks really good. Uh, the scheme I did on it has already grabbed me, so I'm going to go back to it. It's not often I actually tell people to go and read a book. <laughs> Thanks so much, Charlie. Appreciate it. Uh, 
No problems at all. Um, and look, I just want to also, while we're, while we're here doing this, I want to invite people across to join my locals community, askcharlielethan.locals.com. Uh, it's the water cooler for business owners. Uh, it can get lonely. It can get boring. It can get frustrating when you're sitting there on your own trying to run your business and I don't know. I mean, I work for myself. I have a real, real cow of a boss and a really lazy employee. Um, and sometimes I just want to have a bitch about one of them. <laughs> and nice to go and have a chat to someone um, and just feel not quite so alone. Um, and again, it's places where it, it's not open to the public. It's people like yourselves. You can come have a conversation, ask a question, say, hey, how would I do this? Or what do you think about this? Am I being, am I overreacting about AI? What do you think? <laughs> and had, open up that conversation. So please come, over, come across and join me there. Um, now, have you got one thing that you would like uh, my listeners to take away with them from this conversation? Yeah, I think, well, I might squeeze in a second one, but the, but the first thing is that we started with is that make sure you systemize whatever you're doing in your company. I think that's so important. I've, I've, I don't, maybe you said it in the introduction, I've had a couple of companies in the past. And one of the things I learned is make sure you systemize your marketing, your sales, your support, whatever it is. And of course, I'm more or less of a marketing guy, right? One of the things that I would like to add to the, to the marketing systemization is create a schedule that works for you by creating expert content and make sure that you share it and that you really talk about the things that people are are, are, are having a problem with. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thanks. I love it. I love it. Yeah, systems, absolutely. Keep, keep Create your systems. And I, I, the thing that I really want to highlight out of what you just said there is um, create a schedule that works for you. It might not work for the next person along. That's okay. You're the one that has to run this. It's got to fit in with your business and your schedule. So that's fantastic. Yep. Well, look, thank you so much for this time together, Max. Thank uh, you. Frank. Sorry, yeah, Frank. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sticking <laughs> Maxiality. <laughs> Let's be yeah. on to the next bit. Um, Maxiality.com to catch up with Frank, and I will have all his contact details in the sh uh, notes for this show. Uh, until next – oh, must remember, remember to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and ring the notification bell so you get notified of the content that drops. And I will see you next time. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks, Frank.